Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Jared Grebner Show. This is Scott Kirker, along with Metamore head coach, Jared Grebner. Coach, uh, rainy night last Friday night. You go over to East Peoria East Side Center. Beautiful setting. Uh, unfortunately, it was pretty pretty wet out there, but uh, you took your team over and uh, uh, you kind of took care of business like you kind of had to or should have done. Mm -hmm. um, got off to another fast start. Um, I believe in the first quarter, you scored 34, 32 points. Mm -hmm. Um, very efficient. Your your the first drive. Uh, I I thought that was a very significant drive. It was basically all uh, Evan Kyle. Uh, he he had all the carries. He had the only reception. Um, but a very impressive first drive once again. Yep. And you know, we've kind of been saying that the past couple of weeks we've been able to get out to fast starts. And you know, it's just a good job of the offense setting the tone and. Uh, Evan just happened to, uh, wasn't by design, but he happened to carry the rock uh, every single time uh, down the field for a touchdown and everything like that. And then, you know, the ball started to get spread around, and you, know, you have complete confidence in everybody out there. Well, uh, the second drive, I think that was the Jadon Cranford drive. Mm -hmm. It was just two plays, but uh, uh, still, you know, you, you, were, you were kind of, eight, you were able to do, your, your linemen were imposing their will. You were able to do the things you wanted to do. Um, and in games where you need to kind of show your dominance, your kids have been doing that. And um, I, I think that it, since since the, the loss at Morton, your team has each and every week gotten just a little bit better, and I thought Friday night really proved that, at least for the first quarter and a half. <laughs> Correct, and that's always the goal is just to get better um, every, single week, every single week, every single day. You know, just try and get to your potential. Um, that's all we ask, and the kids have been uh, working really hard uh, to get better on their footwork, on eyes, and where they should be, on what their reads are, and just becoming more consistent as an individual and then collectively as a team. And so uh, we're pleased with how things have progressed. I, I thought your kids, you know, that, that first that first half, first quarter, I should say, um, very, very, like I said, very efficient. Uh, one of the things that I, I was really most impressed with defensively, they came out and, and showed you a lot of different things, and your kids responded very well. Now they got a they got a couple scores in the first half, um, but I thought your defense played very very well once again, um, and and kind of controlled the, the 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 defense for the most part. Your defense controlled the tempo of the game. Yeah, and you know. Uh, they were able to get off the field when they needed to, um, especially in the first half. Um, we're getting better at uh, being more consistent in our run fits. Um, some of our guys on the back end are feeling more comfortable in where they need to be on passes. And sometimes it's just a matter of taking that first step, that proper angle in order to get to the ball just you know, a half second quicker or the angle in order to make the proper tackle to make sure you're on the correct hip and not overrunning the ball. And so, um, you know, things are starting to come come together a little bit, and hopefully uh, we can continue that. Um, you know, your, your starters basically only got to play about a quarter and a third, um, and then you made wholesale substitutions, which were fantastic. Now, they may not have been able to do what you wanted them to do, but, but your second and third teamers got it what two and a half quarters of plate playing time in that game which is outstanding your kids got to play a lot of football uh you know, between uh the jv game and some of the varsity game some of those kids are able to make great strides and so uh getting them varsity experience as well is only only going to help them in the long run only going to help our team in the long run so trying to get as many players on the field as possible is important to all of us it's important to the coaches it's important to the players getting out there on the field uh that deserve to be out there it's important to uh some of the guys you know that are starting as well to get out there and see uh the hard work of all their teammates kind of come to fruition you know the other thing a little bit of a, a side note with football you know when you had that game been played at Metamore a year ago your, your the jv or the freshman game would not have been able to be played on old malone field uh, the second game, the varsity game, probably would have been a muddy yeah. quagmire mess. Um, 
but your kids, it's the first rain game they've really had all year. Your kids, you know, it was played on turf at East Side. If it had been at home, it had been on turf. Um, but it's nice to know that it can rain all at once. As long as it doesn't lightning, you're going to be able to play the football game. It is a nice luxury to have, you know. Uh, years past, we were always worried about, all right, we've got to move it to the practice field. Do we have to move the freshman game uh, in front of the JV game and then go play it over there at their site instead? Yeah. And so you're always trying to navigate some of those issues. And it isn't nice not to worry about some of those things. They just say, hey, we're going to go play. We're going to go play. Don't so, have to worry about it. And so we're very fortunate to be put in that situation. Um, especially this year with eight of our nine games uh, being on turf. And so uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about that mud so much. You, know, you might have to worry about things being wet and, and taking care of the balls and things of that nature. But, you know, we were able to dodge the rain for the most part. Uh, right. right at the end of the first half, it started to rain quite a bit. and rained all through halftime. I think it rained you know, more on the cheerleading team and dance team for East Peoria when they're doing their senior night performances. Yeah. Because uh, it was an absolute downpour during that portion. And then, so we kind of dodged the heavy stuff there for a while. But, uh, and so we were pretty fortunate when it comes to the rain. As you wind down your season, and it's hard to believe you're in week eight, you're getting ready to play week nine already. Mm -hmm. um, but when you, as you wind down and you're, you, you look at your team from the first game of the year against Sterling, which I think was just, what, a week and a half ago? It seems less than that. And now you're getting ready for week nine against Dunlap, a very important football game. But there were just a couple of hiccups. But overall, you've got to be really pleased with the progress of your football mm -hmm. game. You know, we always, you don't want to be playing your best football week one. Um, and so I think we have been building. We've been able to add a couple things here and there based on our personnel. Uh, and then just start to hone in, and uh, hopefully that keeps building, and we can carry that into this big Week Nine matchup with uh, Dunlap. They're a very solid team. You know, Coach Caslett always does a really good job with them. Uh, they have some really good players. You know, they have a small senior class. Uh, they have some sophomores that are some key contributors. Mm -hmm. um, but the bottom line is. Uh, we're going to have to go out and play a, a really good game uh, against a good Dunlap team. It's a game that's you know, it's going to be a battle uh, from that opening kickoff to that final horn. And so it's a matchup that we're looking forward to. Both teams come in at 6-2. and two. Um, You're both tied for third place in the mid Atlantic Conference. Um, when you get ready to play a team like this, are there other wrinkles you throw in for this specific game? What, what, maybe things you wouldn't have done or haven't done yet in other games, saving them for a big game like this? Well, some of that has to do a little bit with uh, their personnel, um, whether it's their offensive personnel or defensive personnel, and how you win a game plan it. Um, at this point in the year, there's not going to ever be any wholesale changes, you know, we're Metamore, and we're going to do what we do, and they're done laughing. And they're going to continue to do what they do. And um, and so you have to be able to stop their bread and butter, and they have to kind of be able to stop our bread and butter. And it can be a battle of wills when it comes to that. And um, But when it comes to adding a, a wrinkle here and a wrinkle there, and, you know, that's just based on some of our scouting. Um, you know, they do the exact same, same thing, thing. Yes. Uh, you know, on maybe where they want to run or – what type of front they want to give us, or how they're going to attack this, and so it's always a, it's always a chess match. It's always a fun chess match to see uh, how each team's going to attack each other, and you know that's week in and week out. You know, and, and that's one great thing about football. When you look at your team, you you don't have a big senior class, but it's bigger than Dunlap. And I've always believed that to win football games in high school. You've got to have major contributions from your seniors, and and because seniors have that sense of urgency, and, mm -hmm. and in close ball games, I think you always win with seniors. Is that true, or am I maybe overestimating that just a little bit? Sometimes I think it might depend on the group, um, but seniors, uh, there is, you did mention that it seems to be a little extra urgency, um, and I would agree with that because. Uh, 
you don't know how much more time you have left. Right. Uh, maybe with some underclassmen, it might be like, I got two more years of this. I got one more year of this. And, uh, but that's one thing that you can't so you can't take anything for granted um, because well, you look at some guys and you think, oh, I I had a year left, and all of a sudden an injury hits and you miss the rest of your senior year or, or anything like that. And so you just don't know what the future holds. Uh, now seniors, you you kind of know that. All right, the last I can be playing possibly is Thanksgiving weekend. That's it. That's all I got. And so you can kind of see that. Hey, my football career might be coming to an end, and so they're going to make it the most memorable um, football moments that they have uh, to make it all worthwhile and have all their hard work pay off. And so having the, the, that leadership on the field and, you know, having those guys playing for that next week uh, because they just simply don't want to take the pads off yeah. and they don't want to take the birds off those helmets, um, that, is, that is a nice luxury to have. And, uh, you know, those seniors always play an important role in every one of our team's success. And, and you're, you're only guaranteed those those nine regular season games. After that, it's win, or if you lose, you go home. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a, it is a, a, a double-edged sword and kind of a bittersweet way to end your high school playing days, whether it be football, basketball, any sport yep. you play. That's the, that's the that's the the whole deal. You, you've got to you've got to keep winning to keep playing. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at your team now, I, I think you've got you've had some really good senior leadership, and I, I think that's that's the other side of that that it makes it so important. You know, is is when you're when teams are really good, you can look and see, yeah, we've had some contributions, and these kids have been really good. But senior leadership is kind of pretty important. Yeah, and those seniors, um, the good thing about them is they don't have to be named captain to be a leader. Uh, right. You know, we have our four senior captains; they've all all done a phenomenal job. But even the ones that aren't named captains, uh, they still are leaders. They some are more vocal leaders. Uh, some lead by example, but they all lead in their own way and uh, set the example and set the tone for the rest of the team. And I, you know, you, when when a senior does get hurt, like a Gavin or Walkman, mm -hmm. you really feel bad for guys yeah. like that because they put all their eggs in this one basket to, yeah. be a, to be a good football player. And when their season and their careers are cut short, that's that's pretty sad. Yeah, and you know, it's a testament to guys like Gavin. Um, you know, he's a, he's one of the true kids that. You, you had to kick out of the weight room almost. Cause he lived up there. I mean, he just continued to transform himself uh, day in and day out over his whole high school career, really. And uh, he's done a good job you know, with football progressing through there. He's done a tremendous job with baseball. You know, Gavin's a really good athlete. And um, it says a lot about the character of a kid when he continues to come out every single day, uh, really be another coach on the field, uh, help his teammates out still. Um, you know, help run the scout team, help get guys organized, and just do all the little things that he probably doesn't have to do, you know, because right. they were all getting done prior to him doing all that, but he took a leadership role and took that upon himself because, you know, he wants to see all his buddies keep succeeding on the field as well, and he's still a part of guess Whether Gavin has football pads on or not, he is still an integral part of this team, and uh, he is still, you know, one of our leaders out there. And so, you know, and that's how it is with all of our players. And so your heart goes out for players like Gavin. Uh, you wish you could see him out on the field again. Unfortunately, you know, uh, that's not the case. Um, but our players kind of play as you know, through him, as an extension of him and for him. And, you know, that's what they do to pick each other up. And uh, this squad's done a really good job of that. It makes it kind of happy that you guys switched senior night from the last home game to the first home game because you know he was healthy and most of the time you're seniors and everybody's healthy for that you know that first yeah. game of the year and I, I'm, I'm it, it always was kind of sad to watch a, a senior who had played for three years and they get hurt in the middle of the year and they have to walk down the track with the crutches or they can't play because they've been injured um I'm, I'm, I'm really glad you guys moved that to the first half of the year. And the funny thing is, uh, we've had seniors <laughs> unable to play even the first week. Like right. This year it was Connor Bidney. Yeah. You know, he had the shoulder injury. Uh, the good thing for that, the good thing about that is 
he was we knew he was going to be able to come back at, at some point was just going to miss that game so we knew that there were still some games for connor there in the future uh but uh as the season rolls along, some of those things kind of pop up um, where somebody has to miss a game. And it's just another opportunity for uh, teammates to pick each other up and uh, for another guy to get an opportunity. Your, uh, your, your, your team, it's one of the things that I think I, I've i really kind of come to enjoy is, you know, uh, I'm still a little bit old school. So, you know, when you come to a Metamore game, you're expecting that power run game. And, and the, the one thing about it is you guys are, are throwing the ball and not – you're not letting the defense really dictate. You're throwing it when you want to throw it. And, you know, yeah, the defense kind of dictates that a little bit, but you're still throwing it when you want to throw it. Mm -hmm. And the success you've had throwing the football this year has been outstanding. And a lot of that goes to, to Nick Rhodes. Yeah, Nick's done a great job. Uh, you know, it's not very often where he misses a read here and there and or misses a throw. He normally has them uh, put right where they need to be. And you know, in Cease Peoria, he was six for six passing. <laughs> you know, that's that's pretty efficient. Yeah. Um, and so, like you mentioned, it is nice uh, not having to throw the ball uh, all the time to be able to throw the ball when we want to. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it does seem like we throw the ball more than you do, and then you look at the stats and you're like, oh, then he's we only passed it six times, or we only passed it nine times against so and so, and and so uh, it's a nice luxury to have to pass when you want to and like i said not when you have to right and and the, the other part of that is is the receivers have done an outstanding job of making plays mm -hmm. you know you, you look at the great quarterbacks in the nfl the 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 uh patrick mahomes and and you know all the good quarterbacks in the nfl they throw the ball and it, but sometimes those receivers have to make a play for that quarterback to be successful yeah. and your receivers have made those plays for you correct and that's kind of um the quarterback and the wide receivers making sure they you know work together and have that timing because you know there's been times like you, we've mentioned before where Kendrick will be able to go up and uh, you know high point a ball over top of people you know there's times where uh, Connor Bidney's had a lot of uh, yards after the catch oh, yeah. and stuff like that but that's a tandem thing where you know Nick hits him right in stride you know if there's a little bit behind him. Uh, where you'd have to slow down, you know, it might lead to a tackle. But when you can hit somebody in stride, uh, it leads to those yards after a catch. And so it's kind of a two-way street uh, where you need both players uh, to be able to perform. And then most importantly, in order to make those throws, you need those big boys up front to make sure that they're uh, giving him time and giving him the protection he needs. And they've gotten better each and every week for you also. Um, you know, each week, th those kids, I think, have, have progressed and uh, they've become kind of one unit now yeah. for you. And, you know, you can see your confidence just grow as the season goes on. And as uh, players get more confident, uh, they just play faster. And so when you can start to become confident, play that fast, the game really just slows down. You might, you know, come off a, a combo or double team block and to a linebacker a little bit faster than you would have week one just because – You've seen that at game speed. You're confident in your abilities. You're confident in the first steps you're taking. And those uh, five guys up front are really gelling this time of year. It, it certainly has been. And why don't we take a break now, and, and when we come back, we'll have the Germantown Grill uh, players of the game. And uh, before we go, I want to thank Germantown Grill for once again hosting our show here tonight. Yeah, they and, do uh, a wonderful they, job. They, they do us. a wonderful job. Thank them. Thank Jane and Sarah. Um, they, they, they've been fantastic. When we come back, we'll have the Germantown Grill players of the game. Central Illinois, you asked for it and we listened. Germantown Grill is growing to meet customer demand, adding more dining space and a private gaming area featuring games powered by Gold Rush, the gold standard in video gaming. And Germantown Grill still has all the food and spirits that keep our customers coming back. Stop by to check out our daily specials. The game's on at Germantown Grill, where Central Illinois loves to eat. Open seven days a week, just off Route 116. Welcome back to the Jared Gardner Show. Coach, you know, we talked a little bit about this before we went on air, about who we, who we thought would be the players of the game. And, you know, we, we talked about this guy and that guy. And, you know, why don't we just name the entire offense your players of the game? They, they played outstanding football Friday night. 
Uh, no punts in that first quarter and a half. He scored 40 points in the first, I think it was 16 minutes of the game. And your kids were, they just played outstanding. And um, to just single one guy out probably would have been a little bit of an injustice. You know, we thought about giving the, 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 the game, uh, the player of the game to Evan Kyle, but Jadon Cranford actually had more yards. Uh, you know, your offensive line did an outstanding job blocking. Nick Rhodes, six for six. Uh, Kendrick Chaffron had, you know, how many receptions and I believe two touchdowns. Yeah, and then Connor Bittman had yeah. a nice big one. And, yeah. And so they've, that whole unit has done a really good job. Uh, you got to thank uh, coaches like Coach Delinsky, Coach Otto, Coach Simmons uh, for putting all of them in positions and uh, coming in coming up with a good uh, game plan week in and week out uh, to make those guys successful. And so you know, I'm very thankful to have all those guys on the staff because they do a tremendous job week in and week out. Uh, but those the players, you know, they make you – they always have a tendency to make, make you look good. Yeah. And that's who it's all about is those players. And uh, we just mentioned that the offensive line has really come together and gelling and you know, part of that offensive line sometimes for us is, you know, the tight ends and the H-backs with, you know, you got Sam Bagol, A.J. Stone, Marshall Vasquez, uh, Seth Bauman in there. and whoever, who, Cam Nichols Cam, been rotating. Cam Nichols has been rotating in there. And so whoever you put, has gone in there has uh, blocked with pride, and they've done a really good job. And um, because whenever they see those running backs uh, break free, they know that, hey, we're a big part of the reason why. Uh, they're running down the field or uh, getting that 10-yard gain and not being touched for the first five or whatever it might be. Um, and so to have those guys up front set the tone week in and week out for some of the guys in the backfield, all the running backs that we have and the guys on the perimeter and uh, Nick and stuff uh, is really fun to watch as they grow. And it's really fun to watch them in a game interact and uh, be able to go down the field and Hopefully, you know, if that, that'll happen, you know, this Friday. Uh, hopefully we can continue that. Uh, we'll be up against some tough competition against Dunlap. Uh, but I think that offense will be up to the task, and uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. You, uh, you're going to Friday night's game. There's a lot of ramifications, win, lose, or draw for both teams. They're both 6-2. and two. You win, probably get a home playoff game. Uh, but... When you look at the playoffs right now, and it looks like we're going to be 5A, and when you look at that 5A bracket, man, there are some really, really tough teams. Well, whether you're 4A, 5A, 6A, uh, when it comes to playoff time, uh, you're going to have to you know, play the best, and you're going to have to beat the best if you want to advance. And so uh, whoever we draw, wherever we end up, we're just going to end up giving it our all, giving it our best. Uh, that's all the kids have given to us all year long, and we expect nothing more than that. So, uh, whatever, wherever the chips fall, you know, and they, wherever they send us, whether it's home, whether it's away, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, you know, we'll show up, we'll put the ball down, and we'll be ready. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, 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 you really are kind of in a it, that that's the exciting part of the football season is you got a week ten game. You have no clue who it's going to be again. Correct. And that can be a little bit dicey at times, but uh, that's the fun part about high school yeah. football. It's an exciting time of the year. Um, you know, we're fortunate enough to uh, be able to keep playing. Uh, we want to win this Friday, get some, keep that momentum going uh, into the playoffs. And then, you know, from there, you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And so uh, all bets are off and, you know, Whoever's the better team that day is the better team that day and gets to move on in advance. Well, Coach, we'll let you get going here, but thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. We wish you good luck Friday. We'll see you Friday at Malone Field.